was a mom of a really complicated kid who had a lot of issues and a lot of challenges, most of which were sort of unclear and unidentified, but they all sort of had something to do with ADHD. She was first tested and diagnosed and stuff around five, but then we start looking at the school testing and switching schools and looking at special programs in the school, and so that's sort of another round of treatment. And they're all different doctors that are going through along these years. At some point we hit the psychiatric community. They entered the picture probably around age eight, um, and uh, we started trying different medications in that realm to see if that would help with the anxiety and with the attention and the executive function. Um, and, and it just, nothing ever really helped. About 10 minutes on the phone with me, she said, it sounds like gluten. And I said, what's gluten? And she told me, and I cried. Because the thought of taking my kid off of pizza and pasta and bread and um, challah and mac and cheese and the things that her comfort foods was just I, I couldn't even fathom it but I sort of made a deal with my daughter because at this point she's turning 10 when she came home from camp that we would give it a try for one month and we would see and it was unbelievable because within two weeks she went from off the charts emotional liability to within the range of normal so we st stuck with it for a month and a, after about a month I did what I called the matzo ball experiment, and it was um, the Jewish New Year, and so I figured, how, how much harm could it do? I'll give her a couple of matzo balls in the matzo ball soup. She had two matzo balls, and she was sick for six days. And when I say sick, I mean really sick. And emotionally, completely off handle, was unable to handle anything. And at the end of it, she and I both remember this so vividly. We sat on this red couch and she looked at me crying hysterically and I hate to admit it, but I feel better when I'm not eating it. And now almost eight years later, she has never willingly touched it. And there are a lot of parents who are all about, fix my kid, help me fix my kid. Uh, and the way to really address it most effectively, I think, is not to fix the kid but to understand the kid and create the most supportive environment you can so that kid will learn to manage herself because in nine times out of ten these issues are usually with us for life. To the cynics I say you know until you've lived it you just don't know to what lengths you'll go to try to help your kid. I tried a lot of things and at the end of the day it was a mixture of all of it that made the difference for my kid. And it's, it's not like it's a done deal. You know, we're all constantly works in progress and she is very much that as much as the rest of us. But I think finding a way to get a true understanding of who they are and what's going on in their brains and their bodies, whatever method that takes, is worth getting to as deep an understanding as you can. Thank you.